Hey folks, this is Todd from Montmine Media coming at you from the cellar and I think I'm about to get overrun by animals here. Yep. Well, we'll see how this goes. Oh, yeah, easy. Ah, be good. Hang on. See, I've got I've got more help than I expected in the cellar tonight. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. This could get bad. Anyways, uh, I'm here just to check in, and this is kind of specifically for uh, home winemakers or uh, folks who are friends of home winemakers. Uh, Jason Phelps, who's a wine buddy who does uh, some blog posts for Winemaker Magazine, just did a uh, piece on uh, recycling or reusing wine bottles in winemaking. And uh, this is something I wholeheartedly believe in. Uh, a lot of wines bottles end up back in the in the in the recycling stream, which is good if they get made into more glass, but it's not so good if they wind up in the in the dump. And for folks that make wine at home, part of it is they you know it's they enjoy the creation of the wine, but it also it's the about the ability to have wine at a reasonable price on a regular basis. And just like in commercial wine making, the cost of the bottles can be pretty high. And even a really inexpensive glass bottle. Um, like maybe of the quality that we see in this Robert Mondavi private selection. Um, a bottle like this costs about a dollar. And that's about what's available for home winemakers. So it's 12 bucks a case for the pretty much the lightest weight bottles you can find. And so if you wanted to have a nicer bottle like this uh, Burgundy style Kermit Lynch import, they're hard to come by and probably you're going to pay more because the only way you get a reasonable bottle cost is by buying them by the pallet which most folks can't make that much based on uh, legal limits so recycling bottles can be uh, really important and if you have if you're a home winemaker yourself or you've got friends Jason's got a good protocol for cleaning up the bottles and making them nice looking and um, sanitary so that uh, you can reuse them and one of the things I wanted to add is um, sometimes you said you find sediment in the bottom and you need to let it soak for a while. Anybody who's redoing wine bottles, the best thing you can do is rinse right away. It's as like any part of winemaking, rinsing off debris as soon as possible and then using your, your cleanser is the most efficient way. You use the least amount of water in the long run. And so um, rather than waiting for stuff to get crusty in the bottom where you're never sure if you've got all of it out, as soon as you've finished with a bottle of wine, especially if there's sediment, give it a rinse a couple times so you know it's clear and then dry it upside down because too many times I've had good, good intending people giving me a case of wine bottles, but they've left them like this with some water in the bottom for a couple weeks in the garage and when you look inside it looks like a Louis Pasteur experiment. There's fuzz growing, and at this point, I just let those go, I, and I recycle them. Leave them upside down. They dry out. They're good to go. Now, the other thing Jason was talking about is getting rid of the labels and soaking them off. We've done that in the past, but I found some labels come off more quickly than others. They disintegrate. They get into the water. They're floating around. Sometimes it can wind up inside the bottle. And so we've come up with a protocol that we use and when we're processing bottles, we get a bunch of people together and everybody has a different station. But we use a handy paint scraper that for almost all wine labels does a good job of removing the paper pretty quickly. And I'll show you how to do that. And um, of course, the one thing you want to do is, if, whenever possible, assess the, the bottle label, this Vigna Honda Monastrell. The back label on this one is a sticker. So if you can avoid having to scrape or you know, mess around with them. Oh, I didn't get the whole thing. But that's at least a start. So some, some wine labels come off right away. So let's give a quick uh, a quick look at how to do this and how quick it can be. So hopefully this will come out. As you can see, I try to do it against a hard surface so that you're not scraping in midair. It's a lot safer here. But just by going at a little bit of an angle. Oops. Good start, huh? A little bit of an angle. I find it's really quite easy to remove most of the label. Obviously, some are a little bit stickier than others, but this gets us a long way there. 
so there's no soaking to mess around with. Watch out there, Lexi. See? And there. Most of the way, a little soak, dishwasher time, or some like Goo Gone toluene on the outside will wipe that right off. And generally, it works for just about any kind of label. You just have to be a little patient. Now, this is a harder paper label with a stiffer glue. But still, you can see how it comes right off. And so, I highly suggest this as a pre-prep option. It's actually kind of satisfying. So, a little bit of glue to remove, but that'll come off in the dishwasher if you have one, or in a hot water bath, or with a uh, bit of a solvent. So, just a quick tip. Go for it, help your friends out. It only takes a minute to rinse the bottle, take the label off, throw it in a case, and most uh, winemakers who are friends, if you bring them a case of empty bottles, you probably wind, a full, wind up with a full bottle back. Cheers.